Hey everybody, uh, Tanya Yeager here. Um, I just am hopping on here doing this very informal video um, to kind of cover um, the recent information that came out last week um, from the CAMTC in regards to the Federation of State Massage Therapy Boards, um, some uh, guidelines for massage therapy during COVID-19. So my promise to my former students and kind of my community was that I was going to um, take this information, digest it, and do a video and um, a Zoom call for anybody who is interested. So I'm fulfilling right now the uh, video portion of this. And again, this is very informal. I hope that's okay, and I hope you'll bear with me. It's been a couple months since I've been in the classroom. So my presentation skills might be a little rusty and I am going to be going through this document um, kind of, you know, jumping through, but, um, you know, reading directly from the document as well. So it may be a little lengthy. Um, in the comments section, um, when I go ahead and post this to social media, I will let you know kind of um, the areas that you want to jump to. Um, as far as titles are concerned. Um, so when we're covering a specific subject, if it's at, you know, 10 minutes and 15 seconds, I will point that out so you might be able to jump to relevant areas. Um, I do encourage you to watch the whole thing. Um, it, yeah, um, I'll try to make it as brief as possible, I'll get it within, you know, uh, 45 minutes, um, hopefully under 45 minutes, that would be great. Um, but yeah, the... Um, so I'm fulfilling the uh, video portion. I think the call, the Zoom call, I'm going to put off until there really are some more concrete directions by the CAMTC. Um, and if you guys have been getting the emails, you'll understand why um, I say more concrete information and requirements coming from the CAMTC. Um, because in a period of two days last week, between the 20th and the 22nd, um, CAMTC cardholders got two different emails um, that on the surface looked a little contradictory and might have um, created some confusion or just some frustration. Um, so I wanna address that as well. So we'll start with those emails and then we're gonna jump into the document really quickly. So again, uh, pardon my ums and my presentation skills are a little rusty, so bear with me. Um, all right, so on um, May 20th, uh, we got something from the CAMTC that said, um, you know, counties and states are working with the governor uh, of California to reop uh, reopen, um, and that they were hoping that this document was a timely and helpful resource in our efforts to kind of protect the public, protect massage therapists while still providing massage therapy. Um, and that it, you know, the document itself reflects specific CDC requirements and recommendations. Um, and as far as, you know, cleanliness, sanitation, uh, facility um, uh, policies and procedures, and then overall kind of like massage uh, therapist hygiene and things like that. So, um, and then it also stated that, uh, note that the recommendations in the document uh, don't replace any directives by, you know, city um, or state uh, local ordinances um, so that we have to adhere to what the state is doing. Um, and just because they're putting out this document doesn't necessarily mean that we can all just, you know, go back in. Like stay at home laws are still in place and we're still going through that um, kind of step-by-step um, -step process of reopening. So, um, so yeah, it extends its appreciation to the uh, FSMTB board of directors. I just really kind of got over being able to say CAMTC really quickly, and then they throw FSMTB. <laughs> um, and they give us this, you know, guidelines for practice with COVID-19 considerations, right? Which was a 
um, roughly a 45 page document of kind of how we should go forward during COVID-19 with our profession. Um, to me, I took this as, hey, here are the guidelines so far. The CAMTC is putting this out. Um, we're recommending that you do, you know, um, every single one of these or as many as you possibly can. And um, it, yeah, it, it kind of looked like something that was um, going to be required. And then two days later on May 22nd, um, we get something directly, again, from the CAMTC um, in red writing this time, right? That uh, statewide stay-at-home orders remains in place and massage therapy has not um, generally uh, been authorized to occur. Um, and that, um, you know, the governor stay-at-home order is statewide and has to be complied with. Um, and that needs to be, you know, adhered to. And then they um, come with this important notice regarding the FSM uh, TB guidelines. Still having a hard time saying that. Um, guidelines are recommendations by the board, not CAMTC's recommendations or guidelines. And therefore the CAMTC cannot provide interpretation or guidance on what they mean or how to use them. So there's that. So we're looking for, uh, I, I at least know that I am looking for some really concrete guidelines from the CAMTC as far as what is required and what is not required. And this document has been put forth apparently just as recommendations for things that we can do that'll go forward, but they haven't put out any required guidelines as of yet which is why I'm waiting on my Zoom call until I get something that's a little bit more concrete. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this document that is, you know, are good changes to make during a public health crisis. There's a lot of, also a lot of stuff in this document that, um, you know, for different massage therapy, you know, places, seems like it's going to be um, almost impossible to follow through with. Um, there are not very many massage therapists must do this. There's not very much wording like that in here. It's all kind of loose, you know, we, we're recommending that you do this. But there are a couple of musts, and I'm somebody who really looks at wording things and kind of gets into semantics. Um, and so, um, yeah. I guess we'll just we'll just go forward together, shall we? <laughs> so um, those are the communications that we got from the CAMTC. What it basically boils down to is, hey, here's this 45-page document from an organization that the CAMTC belongs to, and we kind of think their recommendations are great. We want you to look at these and kind of employ as much as you can when um, state regulations kind of open up and allow us to do so. Um, but we're not gonna tell you how to interpret these and we can't enforce these. That's essentially what their communication uh, was. So, um, and if I have that wrong, please somebody in the CAMTC come to me and tell me that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm open to, to hearing feedback um, on this, definitely. So um, the document uh, contains recommendations and guidelines for massage and bodywear practitioners to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. That's in the introduction. Readers are encouraged to refer to uh, the board's guidelines for practices with COVID-19 considerations within the state confines of regulatory structures of their uh, respective states. And that means if your state is closed down, you know, your state is closed down. And you, if, if your governor has said no massage can happen, no massage is happening. Currently right now in California, the only massage that's allowed to be happening with a whole bunch of these considerations in place are if you are working at a chiropractor's office, they are allowed to have massage therapists um, working through chiropractor's office currently. And if you are working at a physical therapist's office, you are allowed to perform 
um, physical therapy and, and uh, at a physical therapist's office and at a chiropractor's office um, currently. Those are the only two places that massage is allowed. Um, you know, and even then that is up to the specific office itself, whether they think it's a good idea. And of course their therapists, whether or not they're comfortable coming into work and working on the public um, while we still have numbers going up. So um, just know that. So as we get into this, um, let's say no matter the overall health uh, picture of a client, massage professionals must apply minimum uh, infection prevention practices with strict attention to protect the client and themselves uh, from the spread of infection. So it, it's basically saying no matter if your client seems okay, you really still need to kind of be looking out for their, um, their general health and wellness and making sure to employ some of these so that we're not spreading this disease, of course. And then uh, please note that the uh, COVID-19 uh, situation is rapidly evolving um, and the board affirms the importance of regulated massage and bodywork um, professionals who are adequately informed to practice safely uh, and competently. And then of course um, that this document is going to be kind of ever evolving as we learn more and know more about the COVID-19 situation. And that was just the introduction of my video. Cheers. Don't you wish I could just click it off right now? <laughs> I kind of do. All right, so first we're gonna look at facilities cleanliness. And um, this has to do with kind of like disease prevention and disinfection within the facilities. Um, and there's not a ton uh, to report here that, that you wouldn't normally do within the facility itself. We're talking about, uh, um, you know, kind of, uh, the, the building, the, um, some of the massage rooms, although it does get very specific in, in the massage rooms, but the, the building itself. Um, so what's really important is that um, you can absolutely use things like routine cleaning um, products like uh, soap and water to remove visible soil, um, dusting and uh, glass cleaning, you know, uh, glass cleaners uh, for surfaces. That's, you know, all of that is great, um, but they really do want you to disinfect those surfaces as well. So doing a cursory kind of wipe down and dusting is fine, but um, areas that get touched a lot, right? Um, your front desk portion where somebody's gonna sit down and, you know, pull out their purse and be pulling things out um, and doing a little bit of business, right? Um, surfaces that are touched a lot need to be disinfected by a Environment Protection Agency, EPA, um, approved disinfectant. So those of us who are super enamored with the idea of using essential oils to kind of um, disinfect things, that's, that's a no-go right now. <laughs> Right, um, we're not using essential oils to disinfect, um, you know, our professional workspaces during this time. Uh, really important that you get something that's EPA approved. Some of these EPA approved things um, are, you know, very much harsh chemicals, and so it's important to have good ventilation. And they talk about that in here, making sure to ventilate the space, all spaces, as much as you possibly can. Um, so yeah, find an EPA registered disinfectant specific for use um, against SARS and uh, COVID-2. Um, and, um, and make sure that you follow the directions. Um, and that's really important. Ventilate the space afterwards, which means open doors, open windows, run fans. Um, and yeah, some of these cleaning and disinfecting uh, chemicals require you to wear gloves. Um, so you may have to do some gloves or eye protection or face masks when you're actually doing some of this. Um, so yeah, they talked about that. And then um, specific guidelines for um, particular areas within the facility. So first we talk about the reception area, right? Super important. Um, so what they're recommending is that we declutter and remove all kinds of items from the reception area that might become easily 
contaminated and required repeat disinfection. So um, things like magazines, pamphlets, knickknacks, candy bowls, no candy bowls right now, guys. Um, you know, tea stations, remove those for right now. Um, you know, they may be able to come back in time, but right now, not a really good idea to have a kind of generalized candy bowl or a tea station. Um, so declutter and remove items. Um, organize the reception area to promote physical distancing. We understand that physical distancing right now is about six feet apart. So um, no chairs right next to each other, but you know, six feet uh, from one another. Um, let's see, make alcohol-based um, hand sanitizer. It's gotta be 95% um, uh, alcohol. Um, and make that easily accessible to clients, both entering and exiting the facility. Um, yeah, make uh, basically no touch trash cans available um, and tissues always available, but they need to be no touch. So you shouldn't have to um, grab something and flip it up to throw it away, right? It should just go right into an open wastebasket. Um, encourage clients to wear uh, their own face masks to the facility and then provide surgical or other disposable face masks to those without a mask um, when they're actually coming in upon arrival. Um, and then of course, place signs about good hygiene and cough etiquette. Uh, really important to um, get some signage and you can get this from the CDC, uh, signage about cough etiquette, um, you know, and regularly washing hands and stopping the spread of COVID and, you know, um, that type of stuff. So, um, and then disinfect high touch surfaces. We kind of talked, that, uh, talked about that. Um, surfaces that are handled more frequently throughout the day by numerous people between clients uh, with an EPA registered uh, disinfectant. Um, high touch surfaces, things like door handles, counters, tabletops, pens, pencils, um, you know, uh, clipboards, desks, light switches, water fountains, and uh, payment touch screens, all of those things should be um, disinfected on a regular basis. And then ventilate, ventilate, ventilate. Open things up. Um, they talk about using a HEPA air filtration system whenever it's available. Um, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of our places um, of business don't necessarily have a window that you can open. Um, and so getting an air filtration system that you can turn on for a couple of minutes or turn on overnight is a really, really good idea. And then cleaning floors um, at the end of the day is super important. Uh, they kind of talk about that. Um, and that wearing a face mask while you're um, doing vacuuming specifically. So if there's carpet in the office, whoever is responsible for cleaning the office um, after office hours should be running that air filtration system or you know throwing up open all the doors and then wearing a face mask when they're vacuuming because vacuuming kicks up all kinds of like large particles. Um, so they talked about that. Retail area, I'm sure you guys, like I really don't feel like I need to go over this because it's about the same. Uh, retail products are gonna have to be wiped down on a regular basis because people go over and touch them. Um, you know, samples, not a good idea right now. So if you're selling certain creams or things like that and you have samples of stuff for people to kind of dip their fingers in, not a really good idea right now. That's a that's a no-no. Um, and then of course, um, same type of thing when it comes to the bathroom, right? The, the restroom areas, wiping things down. Um, it talks about you know, trying to wipe things down after every client, after each client. But if you're working in kind of a, a, a larger facility that has lots of different therapists and lots of different clients, that's gonna be really challenging. Um, one of my personal recommendations is if you can't do it after each client, because you know there's multiple people there, just certainly whenever, whenever you know, the therapist goes to the restroom to wash their hands. Maybe they could wipe down a couple of things or a designated person to make sure that they're doing it at least once an hour. Um, 
And that's me saying that, that is not in this document. It just says wipe it down after every client. Um, uh, and then of course, ventilate restrooms overnight. So run that HEPA air filter, um, or if there's a small window or something like that, that you can open up safely overnight, um, go ahead and do that. So then um, it talks about hallways. We're not gonna get into that because, you know, rinse, repeat. Um, and then it talks about the session room. And I do really want to kind of drill down on the session room because it affects, um, you know, the massage therapist specifically what's in their room. So again, declutter, remove items. Um, so magazines, uh, knickknacks, bookshelves, decorative tables, extra chairs. A lot of times we have extra chairs for people to set things on um, and they're encouraging us to kind of take those things away. Sometimes we have decorative tables that we're setting, you know, a beautiful little statue or, you know, something like that to make it look nice. They're just saying that we should kind of do away from some of these things because it's more easily contaminated. Um, so, you know, how I envision this, envision this is, you know, it's the table, it's the stool for uh, the massage therapist to sit on when they're doing things like feet and um, neck and head, and then, you know, maybe one chair for the person to um, set their clothing on, you know, and sit while they're putting their shoes on and things like that. So maybe kind of bare minimum type stuff. Um, hand sanitizer should be in the, in, in all rooms, of course. Um, so here's a big one. Um, and this is one that I really felt like, you know, when I was reading through some of this stuff, it was like, people need to know that this is being recommended. Um, and we'll see what, you know, what happens going further. But, um, remember I told you at the beginning of this video, there weren't very many musts, right? There weren't very many, um, uh, sentences in here where it said client must do this or practitioner must do this. They're saying we encourage, we um, recommend. This is a must. And so when I'm digesting this, I'm kind of, you know, really zeroing in on this. So both client and practitioner, that means the client and the massage therapist must wear a face mask during the whole session. The client must also wear a mask from the time they enter to the time they leave the facility. That's a lot to digest. Um, you know, they do go into the fact that um, a, a little bit later on, as far as massage therapy, uh, massage therapist um, hygiene and kind of our clothing and things like that, they go a little bit further into types of masks that are recommended. Um, but that's a big one. It, it says uh, both the client and the practitioner the entire time during the massage. So client is face down, still has to wear a mask, right? You're at their feet and doing reflexology, still has to wear a mask, both of you guys, right? Um, of course, disinfect high touch surfaces between each client, right? With an EPA um, registered disinfectant. That's why we really kind of want to make sure that there's a least amount of um, furniture in the room as possible, <laughs> right? So they're saying declutter so you don't have to disinfect as much, um, but certainly um, disinfecting, uh, you know, everything between each client. So more time has to be given between clients. It's really important. Uh, cover the massage table or the massage warmer and padding on a massage table with a heavy duty plastic sheet or table protector. So lots of places that we go into have a warmer or they have a massage uh, pad that both protects but adds a little bit of cushion on the massage table. Um, and they're saying that what we should be doing is taking and covering that with a heavy duty plastic sheet. It goes on to say, that absolutely after every single client, not only are you taking off the linens, but you are spraying down and disinfecting that um, heavy, um, heavy plastic sheet as well. So that has to happen um, between every uh, massage client according to them as well. 
Um, ventilate the session rooms between clients uh, by opening doors and windows or by turning on that HEPA uh, air filtration system whenever they're uh, available and it's, and it's possible to do so. And then, of course, ventilate at the end of the day, you know, um, same, same type of thing. If you can open a window or run the HEPA um, all night long um, when it's available. So then we jump into specialized spa equipment. So this is just in the kind of in the room itself. Um, yeah, the session room. And then we go into specialized spa equipment. Um, <clears throat> spas are kind of interesting because there's wet situations there and there's also um, you know a certain amount of thermal therapy that's actually happening there as well um, so that is probably going to need even more disinfecting so the things that I noted here um, so cleaning all specialized spa equipment according to manufacturers instruction is really important and they talk about the use of ultraviolet radiation um, as an acceptable disinfectant method for spa equipment um, whenever it's appropriate and recommended right so that's a that's a good way to do it um, flush any hydrotherapy uh, tub jets or foot basin jets or whirlpool jets um, and make sure it's a manufacturer in, uh, approved disinfectant and that has to happen in between each client, right? So there's none of this, okay, we do it at the end of the day, right? It's gotta happen in between each client. That's really important. And then clean and disinfect, uh, disinfect showers, saunas, steam cabinets, wet tables, hydrotherapy tubs, bathtubs, foot soaking basins and other equipment um, with EPA registered disinfectant after each client. Dry the showers, the hydrotherapy tubs, the bathtubs, the wet tables, and the foot soaking basins completely with clean towels um, and um, yeah. So they've gotta be completely cleaned and completely dried between each client. Um, and then clean and disinfect uh, uh, high touch uh, room surfaces. So of course, things like faucet fixtures, light switches, um, seats, tables, uh, the floor around the tub, um, any kind of showers, stuff like that. Let's go into the break room. Um, probably more important for the massage therapy business owner than, or, you know, chiropractic owner. Um, you know, these are things that you know, you might want to keep in mind if you're if you're an owner, certainly. Um, declutter and remove items. So um, take things out of the break room that can become easily uh, contaminated and need repeat um, disinfecting. Organize the break area to promote physical distancing, so six feet apart. Um, and cordon off areas where people shouldn't gather or stand or um, whatever. And then hang signs at eye level to remind staff about respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette and hand hygiene and physical distancing. And then they talk about staggering break times so that not as many people are in the break room. Um, so you wanna reduce the number of people in the break room, right, at one time. So clean and disinfect, uh, oh no, sorry. Backtrack, <laughs> here we go. Uh, break room. Wear face masks. So it talks about um, people being required to wear face masks in the break room um, when they're not consuming food or beverage. If they're consuming food or beverage, obviously they need to be have, have their masks off, but if they're just in there hanging out and talking. Um, and then um, making sure to clean the floors at the end of the day and then ventilating the break room, right? Same type of thing. Uh, there's, there's lots of ventilation. Right, and that's really important. Running fans or opening windows or um, air filtration systems. Um, same type of thing when it comes to the laundry room. I'm not gonna go into the specific points because it's just rinse, repeat. Wipe things down. Um, important to disinfect washer and dryer. Not necessarily the inside, but the outside where surfaces where people are touching. That's really important. Um, and we'll get into linens a little bit later. So. Let me take a, a short break. Why don't you take one too? All Exercising that throat chakra. 
like I haven't in a really long time. <laughs> All right, so um, this is for on-site and out-call locations. Um, on-site and out-call locations, it talks about for corporate accounts, the practitioner should communicate with the management um, of the business ahead of time to inquire if any employees have been diagnosed with COVID or any other communicable diseases within uh, 14 days of the massage therapies uh, or massage therapist's uh, intended visit. Um, so, and that if somebody has, you should not go there and perform massage. Um, that's the recommendation. And then arrange with management ahead of time the use of a private space that allows for physical distancing. Ideally, the space would contain a few surfaces that require um, disinfecting between clients. So um, yeah, make sure the room is relatively bare and supports uh, physical distancing. Um, make sure hand sanitizer is available. That's kind of a normal thing when we do um, out calls or special event type stuff. Encourage clients to wear their own face mask to the massage. So required corporate accounts, um, require corporate accounts to provide surgical one-time use or other disposable face masks to those without face masks. Um, both massage practitioners and clients must wear face masks during the duration of this, uh, the, the session. Again, we see that word must in here. Um, and then it talks about disinfecting high touch surfaces between the clients um, and then disinfecting either your table or your chair, obviously, um, between uh, the clients and allowing for appropriate dry time. So maybe spacing out clients a little bit further apart and then providing a clean uh, face rest for each client. That's kind of a no brainer. We do that anyway. Um, and we're usually kind of, you know, spraying down a, a chair um, in between clients as well. So that's kind of a no brainer. All right, moving on to linen management. Isn't this fun? Okay. Um, Linen management, while you are handling soiled linens, linens that have already been used, they are telling you, please wear a face mask when you're handling your linens. They also tell you, do not shake out your linens, right? Don't shake them because the particles just go flying up into the air. Um, so at the conclusion of the massage session, identify, gather, and remove all soiled linens from the session rooms. Don't leave them in there. So if you have a wastebasket in the session room normally, don't just toss it in there. You've got to take it out, right? Um, and then typically linens while stored, uh, or linens are stored in a ventilated container in the laundry area. While COVID-19 is, uh, is present, sorry, um, in the community, store linens in a closed container. So um, some sort of a hamper with, you know, with a lock, right? Um, I was even thinking about um, something like, um, you know, bin, larger bins, um, like Tupperware bins or something like that, um, that have lids on them. So you want to store both clean linens and dirty linens in something that has a lid on it, right? Like a locking lid. Um, so after handling soiled linens, massage practitioners should immediately wash or disinfect their hands. Um, and clean linens should be so stored in the massage room and they should be stored again in a closed container until, you know, further use. So if you stored your linens, just kind of like, you know, in a, um, in an open cabinet or something like that, you might want to consider a different space. Um, that's a little bit more airtight. And it goes into policies and procedures. Um, it talks about changes to client informed consent. So obviously any business is going to have to make a couple of modifications. You know, some of these modifications will be made. You know, it's, it's I, I think right now until we get something more concrete, it's up to the employer. Um, you know, so we're gonna have to communicate this to our clients that, hey, because of COVID-19, some things have changed. Um, that's going to, you know, need to um, be put on any kind of um, paperwork, you know, as far as um, clients signing that they understand that there are risks 
um, but they wish to receive massage anyway, um, that type of thing. So they uh, definitely have some sample language on here if you're interested in, in looking at that. Um, it's under changes to client informed consent. And then um, it talks, it jumps right into changes to uh, session scheduling. So if um, multiple massage practitioners work at one facility at the same time, they're recommending that we stagger to prevent crowding in reception areas and promote physical distancing of six uh, feet of space between all people at the facility, right? So you should uh, physical distance while at work um, and stagger the schedules. Um, so allow ample time between uh, massage clients to properly disinfect. So, you know, I, I kind of tend to think that we need more time anyway, you know, five minutes to take somebody to a front area, um, go pee, change table, you know, that's a bit fast as it is now. Um, but we're going to need a little bit more time if we're expected to clean and disinfect things. And there's other things still coming in here in this document that we would need more time for. Just wait. Um, okay, clients uh, receiving massage require uh, pre-session health intake um, and communication. So therefore, uh, walk-in appointments are not advised. So they're saying do away with walk-in appointments, period. Um, you know, it, they, they really need, people need to be screened over the phone. They've got to be asked um, questions specifically about their general health and symptoms that they may have been, you know, experiencing within the 14 days before coming to your space. Um, so they're recommending that everybody change their current policies to by appointment only. All right. Changes to health screening procedures. Um, if possible, conduct health intakes and updates to client health forms before the client session, either through an email or a phone call the day before. Um, so getting in contact with them and doing uh, health intakes. Um, Pre-screening clients, and here's what they recommend that you ask them. Have you been asked to self-isolate or quarantine by a doctor or local public health official in the last 14 days? Uh, number two, have you experienced any cold or flu-like symptoms in the last 14 days? Um, specifically, any kind of respiratory stuff. Number three, have you had close contact with or cared for someone diagnosed with COVID-19 or someone exhibiting cold or flu symptoms in the last 14 days? And number four, have you been tested for COVID-19? Uh, what type of test did you have? And when were you tested? And what were the results? Okay. Um, and then it does put here, if you have any reason to suspect that the client is not completely healthy, please postpone their session. On to more. I said 45 minutes, right? All right, we're at 38. <laughs> All right, um, change to client arrival procedures. Ask the client to wait in their car or outside until you text them or call them to come in. Um, let's see, greet clients at the door, uh, avoiding practices such as handshaking or hugging and use a no touch thermal temperature scan to confirm that the client's temperature is no higher than 100.4 degrees. If a client has a temperature above 100.4 or they have developed a cold or flu-like symptoms or other symptoms suggesting illness since the pre-session phone call, reschedule their massage session and suggest that they call their primary care uh, provider for a consultation. If the client arrives wearing medical gloves, request that they remove the medical gloves before they enter your premises. So, and they're um, just saying that gloves can be contaminated with respiratory droplets from the client and that needs to not come into your facility. Um, confirm that the client has an acceptable face mask and if they don't, provide one for them. So the minute that they are 
going to enter, right, before they even enter, if you're standing at the door, hand them a face mask, they put on the face mask, and if they don't seem to know how to do it appropriately, you can instruct them on how to do that. Um, and then ask the client to sanitize their hands with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer and demonstrate how to put on and take off the face mask correctly. And then escort them to their um, session. So you're like giving them a squirt of hand sanitizer, having them put on their mask, and then like, okay, we can go to our client room now. They outline here clients with high risk. And they really do say that unless otherwise... Um, directed by uh, a primary healthcare provider, clients that are at high risk of severe illness from COVID-19 really should not get massage right now while there's um, active COVID in their community. So um, those people are people 65 and older, uh, people with chronic lung disease, people with moderate to severe asthma, people with heart conditions, um, com compromised or suppressed immunity, uh, folks that are severely obese, and that's with a body mass index of 40 or higher, um, people with diabetes, people with chronic kidney disease, and people with liver disease. <coughs> it's not COVID. Okay, uh, changes to session procedures. Hold on, this is a lot, this is a lot to digest. All right, so changes to session procedures. Uh, friends and family of the client are not allowed to wait in the reception area while the client receives a massage, unless that client, uh, it, it, unless it's the client's legal guardian. So parents may wait, no one else can. Um, both the practitioner and the client, again, must wear a face mask. That is where we see this word must again. I have it underlined. Um, clients uh, must wear a face mask from the time they enter to the time that they leave the facility. Um, Absolutely no intraoral massage or intranasal massage anymore. So um, massage therapists that may have been trained on intraoral for jaw work, that's not happening. That is prohibited. Um, <laughs> this is a big one too. Because, because the face mask is worn for the duration of the massage. Face massage is not possible, and therefore face massage is prohibited right now, which means if you have somebody who is dealing with, uh, again, TMJ, not only can you not go intraoral, but you're not supposed to be touching their face at all. Um, it makes me really feel for estheticians right now. Um, and people who have really bad TMJ. Okay, um, if possible, process the client's payments and rebooking session in the session room after the client has the opportunity to dress. So wait for them to get dressed, you go get the book, or you go look at the schedule, and you present the times to them in the room, and then they tell you, and that, you know, so that they can just leave, right? Um, if applicable, utilize electronic methods for charting, and client survey and feedback. Um, obviously, you should absolutely disinfect your hands directly afterwards and directly before uh, you work on them and request that the client sanitize their hand with alcohol-based hand sanitizer in the session room before they leave. So there's a lot there. And my big takeaways are everybody has to be masked and, um, you know, they're not allowing any more face massage. Um, which for those of you guys who weren't doing a lot, you know, that's maybe not a big deal, but um, I do a lot of jaw work, um, so it's kind of a big deal. All right. Um, 
Client follow-up procedures. Um, massage practitioners are not authorized to share health data of their client without the client's written consent. We know this, it's part of HIPAA regulations. Um, however, should a client develop symptoms of COVID-19 within two weeks of a session, practitioners should contact their local health department for consultation and guidance. Client communication, update the business website to reflect all business policies and procedural changes related to COVID-19. And then communicate policies and procedure uh, changes to the clients during the booking phone call um, and make sure that there's no surprises, right? Um, lots of people are super, super great about, um, you know, just kind of being cool during this period of time and they know that people got to kind of roll with the punches and new guidelines are coming out and things are changing. Um, but people can get kind of grumpy about it too. And the more you can let the person know ahead of time, the less grumpy, you know, people are prone to get. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, okay. Cleanliness on work days. Um, so this is for the massage practitioner. I just went over my 45 minute period of time. So sorry. Um, so this is for the massage practitioner. Um, practitioners must shower and wash their hair on work days. Uh, facial hair has to be neatly trimmed. Long hair is pulled back and secured so it doesn't touch the client. That's not too different from what we normally do, right? Um, practitioners must practice appropriate oral health care before sessions, between sessions, and after consuming food and beverages. A lot of us do this as well. Um, practitioners keep their fingernails short. That's not new. Um, so you can tell I haven't been doing massage for a little while, right? Um, and that means no nail polish, no long nails, no artificial nails. And then um, practitioners must remove rings, bracelets, uh, watches, fitness trackers, all that kind of stuff from the wrists during the workday. We know this. Um, hopefully, you know, y'all learned how to wash your hands, right? Hopefully from your mom a long time ago. But then again, you know, during health and hygiene, during massage therapy school, um, Please know that it's even more important these days. I see a lot of massage therapists who just go in and they, you know, they wash up to the wrists and we do work all the way up past the elbow. So it's really important now that you're, you're really washing up towards the elbow. And when you're um, applying hand sanitizer, you know, where, where it's needed and you're not able to wash your hands, the hand sanitizer has to go all the way up past the elbow as well, not just to the elbow. Pass the elbow. Okay. All right. Um, it does talk about alcohol-based hand sanitizers. It says use hand sanitizer directly before you handle clean massage linens. I thought that was important to note. Um, use hand sanitizer directly before you put on a face mask and after you remove a face mask. Um, it recommends that we use hand sanitizer directly after you absentmindedly or inadvertently touch your face, mouth, nose, facial hair, or hair during the massage session and before you resume massage. Um, so, yeah. There is a portion on here that talks about respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. Um, <clears throat> I think we, you know, all kind of understand, you know, coughing into the arm, uh, that type of thing, getting rid of soil tissues. I'm not gonna go too much into it, um, but really to encourage uh, respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette, provide things like tissues, no touch uh, trash cans and alcohol-based hand sanitizer throughout the massage facility, right? So for use for the clients and use of everybody um, uh, who is working there. All right, another drink. Almost done. Uh, use of appropriate personal protective equipment, so PPE. Um, this is big for the massage therapist, obviously. Um, face masks. Disposable surgical face masks are thin, paper-like material that fit loosely around the mouth and the nose. They're disposable. They can be used, um, and they 
block most large particle respiratory droplets from being expelled or inhaled. The ones that have been recommended, the uh, N95 respirators, or simply called respirators, offer more protection. They are not disposable, um, and they have to be properly worn over um, facial hair, and they need to be cleaned. Um, so, yeah, that's, I, you know, it's kind of up to the massage therapist and um, their employer as to what is going to be provided. Um, uh, the respirators work better, but again, they're a little bit more expensive and um, they have to be cleaned. Um, so directly before putting on the mask, wash the hands with liquid soap and water and sanitize them with alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And then um, remove the mask from behind to avoid touching uh, surfaces and wash hands again after you take it off. Um, yeah. All right, protective clothing, also under PPE. Protective clothing. Um, while COVID-19 is present in the community, cover your clothing with protective aprons, short sleeves, um, or I'm sorry, protective aprons, short sleeve lab coats, or disposable medical gowns. And then change these protective garments in between each client. So they're saying, you know, some sort of protective apron or, um, you know, coat uh, should be worn over our normal clothes. Or they also put alternatively, if that can't happen, it's multiple pairs of scrubs that need to be changed after every client. The CDC recommends changing out of work clothes um, and work shoes into street clothes and washing work garments at the healthcare facility to avoid the transport of potential contaminated items to the healthcare professional's home. Um, if circumstances do not permit laundering on site, work clothes should be removed and contained for laundering in some sort of a plastic bag or, you know, a bin or something like that. And then they're, you know, put in the, in the washer at home. Uh, interestingly enough, they have a section here on safety goggles or glasses. Uh, it says eyeglasses are not acceptable protection as far as PPE is concerned. And if you're wearing them, they must be washed in between each client or replaced. Um, yeah. Sorry, I just, I hesitate because the wording is unclear on whether it's like, yeah, you really should be wearing goggles. Um, they put it in here, so I'm assuming that they're recommending that, but it doesn't necessarily say that. Um, just that goggles should be worn in between. All right, or sorry, goggles should be washed in between if you're wearing them. Um, good news, no gloves. You do not have to wear gloves um, to perform the massage, which is really good. I was, you know, really looking at that and, and looking for that. Um, so you don't have to do that. Really, when you need to wear gloves is um, when you're handling any kind of contaminated laundry um, so nothing much there has changed. Um, there's a whole section on self-monitoring for signs and symptoms of, um, COVID and for, uh, exposure or expected, um, exposure to COVID and then also testing. I'm not going to go into that. That's where you go. Thank you. All right. Massage schools. Um, those of you who are thinking about, um, you know, opening a massage school or you're already you know, opening, you know, working in a massage school facility. Um, all right, so getting into that really quickly. Uh, determine the number of people that can safely gather in the school at one time. Um, so whatever is posted, your maximum capacity that is posted by the state fire marshal, um, it's suggested 25% of what that posting is one person per 110 square feet of usable space um, or whatever that's the recommendation or whatever is um, if it's different required by your state 
right? Um, and then adjust the classroom meeting days and times to accommodate that number if needed. So if you have a lot of students, right, um, you know, adjusting the schedule, um, so, you know, half the students come on one day, half the students come on another day, that's something that they're suggesting. In lecture rooms where students sit at desks or tables, promote physical distancing. We know what that means, right? So in your lecture rooms, we're making sure that everything is um, at least six feet apart. And then blocking off areas where people shouldn't sit or stand or congregate, right? Um, let's see. In classrooms where students exchange massage and body work, place tape on flooring to indicate where massage tables are located and plan uh, 10 feet of space between places where students are standing while giving massage and the next massage area. So you're allowing movement around the table without encroaching on nearby um, people, right? So 10 feet between uh, massage um, tables. And then personal items and things like that should be on their own designated desk or um, in a locker area. And then if you are doing lockers, lockers need to be spaced apart six feet. Classroom policies and procedures, both students acting as a client, uh, both students, sorry, both the student um, acting as a client and the student acting as a practitioner, sorry, uh, must wear a face mask for the duration of the massage exchange. So both people are wearing masks. Um, and again, they can be disposable or be the respirators. Um, CDC suggests that COVID-19 infected uh, respirator droplets can be dispersed when people talk. So for this reason, ventilated student clinic session rooms and student classrooms um, you know, are, are kind of a necessity. So HEPA air filtration systems, uh, opening windows, things like that. They also encourage um, both when we're working with our clients and we're working with each other, because you know we kind of release these um, you know respiratory droplets when we're talking, that we decrease the amount of talking that we're doing both during a session and in school when we're actually um, uh, doing classroom exchange massages. So exchange classes remind the students that um, they should not shake soiled linens, but should wash linens uh, promptly in hot water with detergent and dry them with heat. Students must bring freshly laundered linens to class each session. Um, so, remind students to bring extra set of clothing to wear after class. So like the student would come in in their street clothes, they would, you know, change into their massage therapy clothes, and then they would bring, you know, their street clothes out again afterwards, or change of clothes. Um, and then this is a big one um, for massage therapy schools, I think, because we have um, certain attendance policies that really kind of need to be adhered to. Um, and it talks about it being really important to have leniency on attendance policies and student sick leave and online makeup work within State Department of Education and accreditation agencies. So develop makeup work that students can finish to maintain their grades should they become sick with any illness and needing to self-isolate or await COVID testing. And then students that are at high risk, again, I'm gonna refer back to that, that other um, clients who are at high risk, right? So they list um, these particular students while COVID is in their area um, really should not be coming to massage school, right? Uh, 65 years or older, chronic lung disease, uh, asthma, heart conditions, um, suppressed immunity, severe obesity, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and liver disease. Um, and then students and staff and faculty should self-monitor uh, for signs and symptoms of COVID every day. Um, take your temperature before the work day, and then again in the afternoon. And this last one I thought was particularly interesting. 
Um, assign one or two staff members to greet the school community at the primary entrance to the building every day and assign that staff member uh, use of a no-touch thermal temperature scan to confirm uh, people entering have a temperature that is no higher than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then of course, follow up with questions of, you know, have you had any symptoms? Are you feeling okay? If they report having symptoms, send them home. All right, folks, one hour. 24 seconds. That's what I got. Um, it's a lot to digest. Good for you if you got all the way through this. <laughs> I apologize for my ums and my, you know, reading faux pas. Again, presentation skills are a little rusty. It's a lot. Um, please understand that there's only a few things in here that they say you absolutely must. Um, but even the CAMTC, I can take these off. Even the CAMTC is, um, you know, saying, hey, you know, we've got to listen to Governor Newsom and um, massage isn't open yet. And, you know, more information is coming out and they're, you know, they, they did say that they understood that some places, you know, leniency was going to be needed for some places to make some of these accommodations. And so, these are just some of the recommendations. Um, nothing right now is being enforced and we probably need to wait for, you know, more strict guidelines to come in from the CAMTC specifically um, if you're in California because, you know, that's, that's where we're at. That's who we got to listen to here in California. If you're looking at this video and you're in a different state, um, your licensing body may still adhere um, to this um, and you may still have gotten this um, and therefore you would need to uh, listen to what's going on in your state. So that's it. Um, I will certainly post when I have more information. I may do another video. I absolutely will uh, put timestamp markers and subjects on each one um, of these. So um, thanks so much for listening and be safe everybody. And I know this is a lot of information to digest. Hang in there, we'll get through it.